Hi, Ben here, and we're in the woods again today, and we're here to ask that question. What are you going to take? Are you going to take your axe, or are you going to take your parang on your next bushcraft adventure? So let's see what they can do. So quite often when you get to your campsite, you've got to clear the vegetation that's on the floor, so brambles and a bit of dog's mercury. So let's first try and do it with our axe. It kind of works, but you've got to be very accurate because you've only got a very short cutting edge. And then let's try it with the parang. Obviously, a lot more efficient. You've got a massive 10 inch cutting edge, so it clears the foliage off the floor really effective and easily. So, axe versus parang for that application. I'm afraid the parang's gonna win. So we've come into the woods a little bit further where it's getting quite dense with lots of these thin stems growing up everywhere. So if you wanted to clear an area for your camp, you'd have to start taking some of these out. So with your axe, you're going to have to be a little bit more accurate to hit that because you've got about a three inch cutting edge and this is probably about an inch and a quarter in diameter. So you'd have to be very accurate and strike in. And it's pretty effective. Once you've cut that first cut, you'll probably find that it will bounce quite a lot when you strike with the axe. So you'd have to come quite low to actually get near the base so you could take it off with some sw swipes upwards just like so. So we'll come down to the another stem that's about the same diameter about an inch and a quarter obviously I haven't got to be quite so accurate because I've got a much longer cutting edge but you'll probably find that it won't bounce quite so badly at the next blow because it's a much thinner blade yeah that works pretty good so they both cut pretty efficiently through those size rods. Slight advantage with the parang and the fact that I didn't have to be quite so accurate. Um, but really they were both pretty good. If I was going to carry one in this instance, again it'd probably be the parang just because I don't have to be as accurate. And if I was working in much lower light levels, I'd probably be a lot safer as well. So we've got some larger diameter timber now that's already been felled, but I need to process it into manageable lengths. So we're going to test the axe to start with on that bit of section of timber so we're looking at maybe three and a half inch diameter let's see how quickly it gets through there That didn't take too long, it wasn't the neatest of cuts, it broke out a little bit on the on the reverse side of it. But the extra weight of the axe and the long handle made it pretty efficient, wasn't too out of breath. And we've got a fairly manageable piece of timber to carry out of the woods now. So let's try the parang on that same piece of timber, but just a little bit further up and see how it performs. Okay, a little bit slower. I would say probably a slightly neater cut, probably because that's slightly wider cutting edge. I'm certainly more out of breath because I was having to swing it a lot more. A lot lighter tool, so obviously I was having to put all the energy in myself. So I would actually say, if you're gonna do for efficiency, definitely the ax is the thing to carry. But what I would say is that if I was working in a tight restricted space, I felt like I was a little bit more accurate with my blows with the prang. Certainly a lot neater cut. Um, but yeah, I'd probably say that the axe wins over a prang for large diameter timber, chopping it up. Whew. 
Okay, so the next task is splitting some wood, whether it be for firewood or for craft. So what we've done is we've cut these lengths of timber, we've cut them with uh, saw, so they've both got square ends, top and bottom, so it's a kind of equal test. So we'll place the log on that stump, and then we'll get the axe and see how that performs. Nice central split, flip it over, use the weight of the log, and we've pretty much split that log straight down the pith. So we've got two nice equal halves. So we'll see how it performs again if we split it again. Flip it over again. Yeah, pretty good. So we're using the weight of the axe and it's splitting the ash really nice and easily. So that's pretty good. So the next log, let's see how the parang performs. So we'll go back down to that stump. Now obviously we haven't got the wedge shape that you've got on, a, on an axe. So let's see if I can get that into the log. So wasn't quite central. You could lift the parang up like that and strike the log on the block. I can't imagine that this would work that effectively because obviously now that's in, we haven't got that wedge effect. So with this, I think what I'll have to do is use another log to strike on the back edge of the, the actual parang itself. This is a technique we call battening. So that's split that side off. It wasn't particularly central, so let's have another go, see if I can split this other half in half again. So see if I can get a bit more accurate this time. That's a bit better. Wow, that actually went in quite a long way. So I could strike that all the way down, but it's actually easier and a bit more efficient to just batten all the way through. So, hmm, okay. I was actually surprised how efficient that was really. Um, obviously having no wedge, if we show them side by side, that's got a bit of leaf on it. We've got a real wedge shape to the ax and a real flat blade to the prang. So obviously not designed for splitting really. Well, certainly not big firewood logs like that. Axe has got a win really on the splitting front, but I was actually quite impressed with that. And same scenario, a bit like when we were clearing the trees in the other, uh, in the other test. If I was working in a very close environment, actually battening it through, it's probably a little bit safer. But yeah, Axe wins on the splitting front. So another good test is how efficient it is to actually put a point on a stake for building a shelter or a peg or something like that. So first of all, we'll test the ax. So the technique I'll probably use if I wasn't using a chopping block is to support the pole on my thigh like so, and then strike backwards. So not too bad. And I normally try and do it in sort of four cuts. Just keep spinning the, the log round. Not too bad. So there's our point, and it worked pretty good. Again, because it's got quite a short cutting edge, you have to be a bit accurate, but with practice, you'd probably get pretty efficient at it. So let's put a point on the other end of the branch, but this time using the prang. So we'll use the same technique. So we'll rest it against the thigh. Wow. Okay, so that was certainly a lot easier, certainly quicker. You could really feel that, obviously, because this is a much thinner blade without that wedge shape to it, it just slid through the fibers really easily and efficiently. The finish that's on there is really super smooth. It's almost like I've got a plane to it. So if I was gonna choose one tool for pointing stakes in the woods, I think I'd probably choose the Parang. So the final test that we wanted to put it through is just a bit of craft work. So if you've actually got to carve a kind of tent peg or you've got to carve a little trigger for a trap or something like that, could you use your ax for doing that? So we'll get the ax, we'll have to strangle it up. Obviously you're not gonna be able to use it like a, a conventional ax and we'll try and cut with it. So it kind of is possible. It's a bit thick, the edge is obviously convex so it's not the best for sort of doing controlled cuts. You could apply pressure on the on the pole of the axe to sort of push the, the blade through the fibers. And you could, if you had to, get that to work. But it's a little bit a little bit cumbersome really. But it is cutting and it does something. So yeah, you could persevere and get the hang of using the big axe for it. But let's compare that to using a parang for the same kind of cutting tasks. So we'll try the parang now. So obviously bit like the axe it could be a bit cumbersome if you're using the very end of it but we can strangle that up obviously close to the handle and apply pressure on the back edge of the parang and it's cutting pretty much just like you would be using a knife really 
and if we were going to use the very end of the parang itself where the convex grind which is similar to the axes it's actually cutting pretty good because we haven't got that thick edge geometry and we haven't got that wedge shape to it it's kind of sliding through the fibers pretty easy but near the handle where you can get a lot of control and a lot of balance I think I could pretty much accurately carve a, a trigger for a trap or a notch for a bow drill set or something like that quite efficiently and quite easily so yeah pretty pretty amazing quality of cut actually really smooth cuts there and a lot easier to control so if I was going to pick one tool for that kind of application I think the Parang wins again so there are the couple of things that we've got to think about as well obviously if you're carrying an axe you haven't really got a case that it sits in but you normally have an axe cover that obviously protects the edge this is quite small so it could be a little bit fiddly and you could lose it in the woods if you don't put it in your pocket but obviously it's a lot less bulky to carry than a proper case the other thing that you've got on the axe which is a real advantage is that pole which can be used as an improvised hammer for knocking in pegs and obviously you can strike on the back of that very easily so that's quite a good advantage um, the parang itself that tends to always have some form of sheath so obviously this has got a kydex sheath um, but it's got a belt loop so it means that you can carry it on your belt very conveniently so if you've gathered lots of materials in the woods and you're taking them back to camp you haven't got to worry, worry about carrying your parang separately that's just going to be on your belt so a little bit easier to carry maybe so obviously in these kind of situations and the tests that we've put these tools through the parang actually seems to sort of out, out, outweigh the axe in these particular applications that we've put them through today but I don't think it's one tool that will do every kind of job I think it really depends on the kind of environment that you're in and obviously how long you're going for and what time of the year so if I was going into the woods in the winter I probably would take an axe because I'm obviously going to be splitting a lot more firewood but in this kind of environment with these small diameter stems and if I was making shelters or making hides or maybe just clearing some undergrowth I think I'd probably end up taking a parang with me but that's just my personal choice so it'd be interesting to hear what you guys take when you go out into the woods or on a camping trip do you take a parang with you do you carry an axe or maybe you carry a completely different tool that we've not even thought about so if you'd like to put it in the comments below it'd be nice to hear what you guys carry and I've certainly enjoyed my afternoon in the woods hope you've enjoyed seeing us using some of the tools in their natural environment and remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and we'll see you next time thanks for watching